good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Wherever you are on the face of the map, I pray that this message reaches you in the Most High Yah gives us both understanding and we all take this into consideration. Blessed be the name of Yah. Now, this beautiful presentation, yes, this beautiful presentation was not done by me. It was done by a beautiful brother, beloved brother, my brother. His name is Omar, but I call him Zakaria. You know, his Hebraic name. <laughs> but if you want to find him on Facebook, um, check him out. His name is Prince Wisdom Zion Cool Cat. You know, real humble dude, real chill. Uh, give him a holler, you know. And uh, if you want to know more, you know, if you didn't get more enough of insight with this video you can most definitely ask him some questions about that now reason why i want to deal with this video and i'm gonna title it dross because we have become dross unto the most high guy i want to talk about that because i woke up to a very disturbing and i was annoyed by this message on facebook you know it was a post now this young lady was talking about how she came across men saying they go unto wicked women or find wicked women now because there are no righteous women before them on the face of the earth. Now, I know they probably get that from Solomon, right? When Solomon said there, he has found no righteous woman on the earth, but only one righteous man. But that's not applicable nowadays because the Most High Yah is addressing the whole house of Israel. And how the whole house of Israel has become dross unto him. And we're going to deal with that. Now, let's take a look at it right here. Dross, what does it mean? It means the scum or unwanted material that forms on the surface of molten metal. <clears throat> now that is dross. Check it out. The scum or unwanted material that forms on the surface of molten metal. <laughs> if you look throughout the scripture, Yah is always comparing us to jewels ornaments stones right precious jewels precious precious ornaments precious stones and he calls us his jewels in malachi chapter 3 verses 16 through 18 now nearing the end of this video i'm gonna go to that verse and i'm gonna deal with it as well but this is why because unto the most high yah we are jewels and how he deal with us is the way you purify jewels by melting the dross off the Jews so they could become clean, worthy, and valuable. But by great heat is how you melt the dross off the jury to purify it. Man, I'm telling you, y'all got some words, man. He got some ways of doing things, you know what I'm saying? Beautiful, y'all. Let me go back to that right quick. See, this is the full thing. You know, the refinement process, you know. You know, beautiful stuff, you know. I'm going to go a little slow just in case you want to check that out. But I'm only going to deal with the dross part. But I'll just let you guys see that part just in case you want to deal with it. Beautiful presentation. You see what I'm saying? Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, I'm going to jump right into Ezekiel 22. So right here in Ezekiel 22, it's talking about how Israel is in the furnace, how Israel is in the furnace, right? And verse 17 reads, the word of Yah came to me saying, son of man, the house of Israel has become dross to me. They are all bronze, tin, iron, and lead. In the midst of a furnace, they have become dross from silver. Therefore, thus saith Yah, because you have all become dross not one person all become dross therefore behold i will gather you into the midst of jerusalem as men gather silver bronze iron lead and tin into the midst of a furnace to blow fire on it to do what to melt it so i will gather you israel in my anger and in my fury and i will leave you there and do what melt you because we are now full of dross. <laughs> right? Israel is full of dross. How do I know? How do you know? How should you know? Because we inherited the curse from our forefathers. We have became 
unclean in our minds and our hearts and our doings, very partial within the law, our Sabbaths and new moons and feast days. We have become very dross in all areas and facets of life. Just think about it. Look at yourself. Look at, look at your neighbors. Look at the world. Look at the state that we're in. We are dross. And what does that mean? Unwanted material that forms on the surface of molten metal. This is why God hasn't came back and presented us the new covenant yet. Because he is refining us. Now, if you're not aware of the bloodline of Jerusalem or Zion, well, this is the bloodline of Jerusalem and Zion. The seed of David, sons and daughters. The seed of Zadok, his sons and daughters. The seed of Lawai, sons and daughters. The seed of Benjamin and the seed of Yahuda, sons and daughters. Their descendants who are here in the Americas, who are also spread it all throughout Africa, right? For not all of Zion and Jerusalem came into the Americas. Some were scattered out. That's why you got the Bantus, knowing that they are of Yahuda or knowing that they are of the Y, or, you know, knowing they are of the seed of David, because not all of Zion and Jerusalem were scattered out. But the majority of Zion and Jerusalem, these bloodlines, were scattered throughout the Americas. Well, this is why this bloodline is going through harsh conditions, severe punishment, you know, severe in, uh, afflictions because of the curse. But this bloodline of Zion and Jerusalem has a double curse upon it. Now, you can read about that in Isaiah chapter 40, how Yah talks about how he's going to give Jerusalem a double portion for what they have been through, for it was a double cursing upon them. For it was Zion and Jerusalem's bloodline which caused the people to turn from Yah and go into idolatry and other things because the king at that time or prince and the high priest who's supposed to minister to the people, turn from Yah and allow the people to go into idolatry and listen to other nations preach about their idols and the wonderful things that their idols do not do. <laughs> so that's what caused us to become dross at that point, which trickled down unto now. For we are here in these Americas and we have became very, 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 very dross unto the Most High God. For we have fallen so far away and we still judge one another, ridicule one another, look down upon one another. Do not have that same, do not have a compassionate, contrite heart towards one another. Or towards the Most High where it's, where it's really supposed to be directed. Contrite means apologetic. So if you look at us, we are very dross in all our ways. <laughs> let me finish reading before I just get to talking and let my heart talk. Let me let the scriptures talk, you know. Let me let the scriptures talk. Verse 21. Yes, I will gather you and blow on you with fire of my wrath and you shall be melted in its mist. <laughs> As silver is melted in the mist. Of a furnace. Why is y'all melting us in the midst? Meaning in the middle. Or in the center. Of the people. Of the nations where we are at. Because when you melt iron. Or melt bronze. Or melt silver or gold. It's melted in the midst. In the center of the furnace. So we are being melted in the center. In the midst of the people. Where we are at. Yah is beautiful how he does things. In correlation. So Yah has everything in order, and it's always a correlation with Yah. It's not random. I'm just going to just randomly do them in the midst of the people. No, it's in correlation, and it's tying in. It's a beautiful, it's like that saying, right? See, Yah is a dope verse over a perfect beat. Shout out to, uh, <laughs> shout out to, what's that word again? Brown sugar. <laughs> 
Shout out to Brown Sugar. Yah is a dope verse over a tight beat because it's perfect. And it's always in order. Always in order. Right. Mm. So verse 22, right? As silver is melted in the midst of a furnace, so shall you be melted in its midst. Then you shall know that I am Yah have poured out my fury on you. Then we're going to go to Isaiah 48. Furnace of affliction, for this is where we are at. I'm talking about the bloodline of Zion, the bloodline of Yahuzom that I mentioned earlier. This is us in this furnace of affliction. This also correlates with Jeremiah chapter 30, from verse 9 all the way down. This applies to us because we are in these spaces, in these lots. Where this furnace of affliction is now being tied in unto us. And this is what Yah is doing. So the men who were singling out the women saying that there are no righteous women right now. No, this is what Yah is refining all of Israel. So you may think you are righteous. You may think you are clean. You may think you are being so lawful. Doing things so right and just. And earning your way. For that path to Jerusalem. But no. You're not. Because Yah is not done. With the purification of Israel. Because the heat is still on us. Nowadays. You see it. We see it. Things have turned up. The COVID rise. Banks are closing. Can't even go inside. So much is happening. Yah is turning up the heat. Things are closed down. Can't go here. Can't go there. You know what I'm saying? So much confusion. So much miseducation. So much too much spirituality. So much witchcraft. Warlocks. Like warlock teaching and living. And so much crazy stuff going on. Because we are in the furnace of affliction. Every corner you go to there is... Psychic hand readings, tarot card readings, and so much wickedness around us, surrounded by us. No matter where we at, if you go to that so-called land of Israel, in the kingdom of Yah, a lot of them, a lot of them is into witchcraft, tarot cards, and energies, and all kind of stuff. I know I spoke to them. Even had a lady do something crazy to me, like. Try to say I was gay on some stuff and cause a big room on some wild stuff. Using tarot cards and stuff. I know what I experienced. I know what they into over there. So much wickedness from there to here. Why? Because it's all the furnace of affliction. The refinement process. So Yah is not going to come set up his kingdom in the like he's not going to set up his kingdom. So it can rule the whole earth, not until Yah is done with our refining process. So some people waiting on a 400 year process. That's not applicable. That happened already. Hosea chapter six. Talks about how long we've been in, you know, in captivity and how long Yah has been. You know, how long we've been kicked out of our land. How long y'all cut us off. Not us all off, right? But, you know, two days, 2,000 years. How long we've been kicked out of our land. How long, right? We've been here outside of our land for over 2,500 years. Fulfilling prophecy right there. So what's this 400 year thing? It's been longer than that. That happened already. The first movement out of Egypt. But don't nobody want to consider that. Because it's similar, right? It's similar to to that time nowadays. Because what so-called we've been here, what, 1619, 2019, supposed to be 400 years. It's similar, right? But that didn't take place. So the can got kicked. It's 2021 now. So it sounds similar, but in actuality, we've been here for over 2,500 years, going through the refinement process, right? But 
some of us are so stubborn, prideful, the dross, right? Arrogant. Won't consider that this is not a 400 year process. This has been a 2,500 year process. Practically. Based upon Hosea chapter 6. Right? Two days. Two thousand years. Third day, y'all shall live. Live in our sight. Right? Something like that. Go read it for yourself. Check it out. But it's the dross that have us with these unclean thinkings. Keeping Passover outside of Jerusalem. They done mix and match the, the maps and all kind of crazy stuff throughout history. We don't even know where Jerusalem is at. People getting lambs and cooking it and eating it. Not doing it accordingly based upon what it says to do in Deuteronomy. Dealing with the Passover. It's supposed to be kept only in the place where Yah's name is. Where you choose to place his name. And you got to do things in this order and this function. But it's the dross that makes us do things not according to Yah's will. And not accept of our punishment. <laughs> right? And not accept of our punishment. Come on now. Ain't that what Yah said? That we must accept our punishment where we are at? And then Yah will cleanse our land and bring us back? Look that up. But it's the dross that keeps us from obeying that, considering that. Because we are in this furnace of affliction where Yah has put the heat on us so hard, the affliction on us so hard, the punishment on us so hard. Now we just want to get up out of here. We running out of here, leaving before the, the refinement is done, the process is finished. We leaving. Certain translations of the scripture got us thinking that we're supposed to just get up out of here and leave, flee. Not understanding. You know? Not understanding that it was during that time, like when the 70 years was up in Babylon, a lot of Israel didn't want to leave Babylon and go back to Jerusalem. Because they wanted to stay there. They didn't trust in the Most High guys, you know? They didn't trust in him that he's going to rebuild this and things going to go back to somewhat how it was and Yah was going to be among them. They was afraid, like we are now. Afraid to trust in Yah, turn to Yah and accept and consider that we Israelites and this is what we're going through. And we must return to Yah and be contrite and, and pray. Give Yah our prayers and give him no rest. That he may deliver us and forgive, forgive, of our, forgive our iniquities. But it's the dross. The uncleanliness that keeps us from doing that. The confusion. Right? But after that 70 years, a lot of Israelites stayed in Babylon. So Yah told them to flee and leave and listen to the order that was given by Cyrus, his anointed one. For he gave it to Zerubbabel or Belteshazzar at the time. Or was that Belteshazzar? Or was that Daniel? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Shot. I think it was Shesbazar. Shesbazar was um, Zerubbabel, his um, captive name in uh, Babylon. Shesbazar, I'm sorry. Belteshazzar was Daniel. But the people didn't want to listen to the edict given, you know, from Yah to Cyrus. The command to go build Jerusalem, the wall. Well, not the wall, but the temple. You know, and to return back. So Yah was telling them to flee, come about her, for Yah was getting ready to destroy Babylon at that time, which he did when he brought the Medes and the Persians in. He destroyed it completely. <laughs> but we misinterpret that and take that as talking about this daughter of Babylon. Flee from here. Flee from the refining, the refinement process. Really? We got to stay in this furnace of affliction and accept that. Purification that he that Yah is putting upon us, for he's melting that wicked spirit, that disobedient spirit, that partial spirit, that ignorant, that arrogant, that prideful spirit, that unclean spirit, thinking and doing and eating and you know 
Yah is cleaning that. Because we have inherited what? The ways of the heathen. So if we don't let Yah refine us, then wherever we go, we carry them ways with us. And now that land, that nation, that family, that person, them people remain dross. <laughs> Isaiah 48. Behold, I have, this is verse 10. Behold, I have refined you, but not as silver. I have tested you in the furnace of affliction. This is a test. Will you run from the heat or let Yah refine you? For my own sake, Yah says he does this. For my own sake, I would do it. So he says, for how should my name be profaned? Because we profane Yah's name. Speaking in the honor of Yah's name as if we are honorable unto Yah. As if we are honorable servants and doing things so upright. Yesharun. Unto the Most High, Yah, as if we are doing things so right unto Yah. And we speak in His name and rebuke people in His name and do things in His name and carry His name and add His name to our name and walking in His name, but we actually profane in His name before the nations and before Yah. So Yah has to refine and clean the dross off His jewels so we can become purified. And have purified lips that speak the Most High Yah's words in His name. That's Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 9. Purify the lips of His people. That they may speak righteously and clean of the Most High. <laughs> right? For my own sake, for my own sake, I will do it. For how shall my name be profaned? And I will not give my glory to another. So no, he ain't giving his glory to no idol. He not giving his glory to this anointed seed of David or Zadok who shall be risen from captivity. They not getting the glory of the Most High Yah. Yah is anointing himself before the world. Yah getting all of this. You know what I'm saying? Yah made fame for himself with Moses. But see how much, see how much glory Moses got? Yah made fame, made his name known, got fame from what David did. But see how much glory David got? Look, he still got it. This time, Yah's getting all of it. He hungry. He hungry. He eating all of this up. All the glory goes to Yah right now. So when you read that Daniel chapter 2, that stone cut without hands, that's Yah. Taking down all these nations. He, you know, that's Yah. Yah gonna do that. He getting that glory. And then when Yah set up the seed of David after he take down these nations and bring us back on our land, then he will rise this seed of David to be powerful. Do wonderful things. And nations will fear him. Fear things that they have not heard before, seen before. These monarchs, right? These so-called kings and queens on earth. They will fear. For then they will know that Yah is using this anointed one to do his work. And they will be very fearful once they see Yah anoint himself and bring Israel back. <laughs> oh, yeah. Blessed be Yah. We're going to drive down to Isaiah 55. Yah's word will, will not return void, most indefinitely. You guys go ahead and take a look at that. I'm not going to read that part. You can take a look at that right there. I'm still dealing with the affliction and the dross. Because it all, it all revolves around the dross that Yah is trying to cleanse from the house of Israel. All of us. And it's built through affliction. Jeremiah 15. Time of affliction. Yah said surely it will. 
be well with your remnant. Surely I will cause the enemy to intercede with you in the time of adversity, in the time of affliction. So this remnant, you see, is the dress that Yah is cleaning. He's cleaning that dress off his remnant. For the whole house of Israel will not Accept the purification. They run from the refinement. But you sit in your furnace of affliction. You sit in that heat. And let Yah cleanse it from you. And your latter end will be well and beautiful. You will be part of the remnant. Sit in it. Now, if someone is causing you to run from it, misleading you, like Ezekiel 34 applies... Yah will have mercy and compassion upon you, bring you back to understand you must sit in this. He will deliver you. If someone is causing you to error, it is not like you're doing it on your own, like you just don't have the capabilities to comprehend or you just don't understand. Some of us is built like that. I know they used to call me DK growing up. My family humiliated me. You know what DK means? DK means dumb kid. And you know what's crazy? You got to reverse that now for Yah is giving me a new name, which is I was DK. Now I'm KD, but I'm not about to I'm not about to exalt myself in this video. You forgot the initials. Blessed be you, yeah. Psalms 119, 119, the wicked is dross. See that you put away all the wicked of the earth like Dross, therefore, I love your testimony. This is David. See, David understood dross. He understood that the wicked sat and lived and boiled and cooked and marinated in their dross and loved the aroma. But those who love purification, <laughs> they love the heat and they know what comes out of heat. Refinement. Isaiah 1, purge the dross. Your silver has become dross. Your wine mixed with water. I will turn my hand against you and thoroughly purge away your dross and take away all your alloy. Or well, alloy, right? See that? Thoroughly purge. That's what Yah is doing. Let Yah thoroughly purge you. Let the Most High do that. Psalms 17, refining Israel. Just take a look at it. See, this is what I'm talking about. How Yah has always been using jewels, ornaments, stones in reference to Israel. This is why, you know, this is <laughs> this is probably why the Jews call themselves Jews, right? Because, you know, they say it derives from Judah, but ain't no such thing as Judah. There's no... I mean, there's no Jew, no J, right? So they probably understood this right here, that the house of Israel were considered Jews to the Most High Yah, and he, you know, uses the metaphor of purification with dross upon the Jews, right, to make us righteous servants, beautiful Israelites. Before the Most High Yah, so that's probably why they call themselves Jews. But nah, y'all not the Jews, because y'all still got that dross hanging upon y'all. Cause y'all Jews in the land, or uh, just Jews in the world in general, are wicked. Go against people, cause they, if they say anything so-called anti-Semitic, like Semitic, y'all not Semitic. Ain't no such thing as Semitic. Shemitic, from Shem, right? Semitism. Y'all go at people and take away all their finances, take away all their well-being, take away the whole statue because they make some kind of insult that you would call anti-Semitic. Um, like and you humiliate them when you can just have a conversation or have some a more humble way to deal with it. But no, you guys are wicked. You guys are dross. So there's no way you can call yourself Jews 
when you guys are still living in your wickedness. Real Jews have the dross melted from them. And we're not Jews yet. We're still going through the refinement process. But you just keep on looking at this. This is talking about the furnace, the dross, jewelry. Now let me look at this Proverbs 25. I haven't read this. Proverbs 25, refining Yisrael. Take away the dross from silver and it will go to the silversmith for jewelry. Take away the wicked from before the king and his throne will be established in righteousness. See that? Lowercase king, right? For that's that means prince. Yah is uppercase king. Entitled to the king of kings. That's why it's king of kings. Notice his king is always uppercase. That king is lowercase. Because Yah is the true king. The lowercase ones are just princes, governors, whatever, whatever, right? That's a beautiful thing. <laughs> Take away that dross, even from the king. Deuteronomy 4. But Yah has taken you and brought you out of the iron furnace, out of Egypt to be his people, an inheritance as you are this day. See, that was called an iron furnace that time in Egypt. But here in the door of Babylon, that's built in the ways of old Egypt, this is called the furnace of affliction. That <laughs> old Egypt was iron furnace because it was like, it was strong, right? Iron is strong. And it was just like, you were just trapped in it. And we, we outnumbered our enemies, but we were just still stuck in this furnace, this heat going through rigor, you know, treatment. And, you know, you, we know how Pharaoh was treating us. Oof. <laughs> Yeah, that iron was, that iron was strong. You know, just thinking about it just got me just, just wandering right now. Takes my mind into, like, the iron being spoken about it through in uh, Daniel chapter two, when you get to that feet and toes, the iron which is the Malachi Edomites, and also which is the nations where we are, you know, in bondage up under, you know, are, you know, the iron is, is them. The clay is Israel. And we see how strong the iron is before us. Wherever we are at today, the iron is strong. Other nations are stronger than us. You know, we're vulnerable wherever we are at. But Yah is using that iron to reflect. Find his jewels. Now, I'm going to go down a little bit more. This is a beautiful thing he put together. I'm telling you, y'all. Go down a little bit more so you guys can just check this out, you know. He's going to do a video on this too. So, it's going to be beautiful when he do it. I like this down here. Deuteronomy 70, I mean, sorry, <laughs> 70, Deuteronomy uh, chapter 7, treasures to Yah's pure gold and silver. For you are a holy people to Yah, your king. Yah, your king, has chosen you to be a people for himself, a special treasure above all the peoples on the face of the earth. Yah did not set his love on you, nor choose you because you were more in number. No, no. <laughs> than any other people, no. For you were the least of all peoples. That's why Yah chose us. See how beautiful and just he is. But because Yah loves you and because he would keep the oath which he swore to your fathers, Yah has brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of bondage from the hand of Pharaoh, lowercase king of Egypt. For Yah is the king of Pharaoh, thought he was the king of God of the earth or God of Egypt. But even Yah acknowledges Pharaoh as the lowercase prince. 
<laughs> but once again, you see how Yah compares us to jewels, his treasures. But like I said, um, I was going to go to that in Malachi when I was getting ready to be done with this video. So I'm going to keep my word with that. I love doing these little videos like this. Um, I normally read from the NLT or NASB, even the KJV, because I just recently found out and considered that the KJV is pretty accurate because I've been studying the Kosa. My Bantu people, Bantu, Bantu, Sony, ni, nani, ni. You know, I've been studying the Bantu. And, um, you know, the Bantu, if you learn about that, and you read the uh, the Kosa. The Kosa is, you know, this was this was what I researched that the Kosa is intact, not tampered with from the original scroll, right? And it's the only translation that is intact and not tampered with from the original scroll, right? From the original Hebrew. It's the only translation, the Kosa. So if you can read it, get somebody to interpret it for you, break it down for you in English, what it's actually saying, then you can get what the original scripture was saying. And only the Kosa has that. Other translations, they don't have it. But only the Kosa. So I've been studying that. So shout out to my Bantu people. Sonini, Nanini, Ocho, Abaya. Yeah, but I'm going to go to uh, Malachi. Three, sixteen through eighteen. Okay, promise out. And it reads: Then those who feared Yah spoke with each other, and Yah listened to what they said. In His presence, a scroll of remembrance was written to record the names of those who feared him and always thought about the honor of Yah's name. Then Yah says, They will be my people, says Yah of heaven's armies. On the day when I act in judgment, they will be my own special treasure. I will spare them as a father spares an obedient child. Then you will again see the difference between the righteous and the wicked. Between those who serve in Yah and those who do not. Now for my KJV, beautiful people. It will read, Then they that feared Yah spoke often one to another, and Yah hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him. For them that feared Yah and that thought upon his name, and they shall be mine, save Yah of hosts in that day when I make up my jewels. See that? And I will spare them as a man spared his own son that served him. Then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serve Yah and him that serve him not. So we see Yah's jewels are this remnant. And they're going through the purification process. Of refinement being cleansed from the dross that we have become inherited through the curses from our forefathers. So, this seated David, who's here in captivity, who shall be your Moshiach or Messiah, anointed of Yah, is here in captivity with you, full of dross being refined. So no, no JC, no Yahweh Shai, no, 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 no. See, he wasn't fully dressed, so he does not fit. He does not fit Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 36. Or he, he does not fit Isaiah 53, verses, verse 10. For Yah also shows that this seed of David has dressed tripping from him and he's being purified as well also this seed of Zadok or Zadok who is of the high priest line 
who shall reign as high priest once this third and last and final temple was built. He's full of dross as well in comparison to Yahushua and Zechariah. In the book of Zechariah, I believe that's four. Um, it may not be four, but you can read. Let's go to it, right? Why be uncertain when we can be sure? What is we talking about? What is we talking about? What is we talking about? See, it's not even verse four. That's why we can be sure. I got I to read this, you know that? There we go. Chapter three. You know, this Yahoshua, full of dross. <laughs> you know? And also the Lawai, the Lawites that's here, full of dross. Benjamin that's here, full of dross. Yahuda, full of dross. Once Yah returns and anoints himself before the world, like he said he would do in Daniel chapter 2. And then Yah delivers us like he said he will all throughout prophecy. And beautiful Isaiah 60 takes place. And then Yah delivers his remnant, Zion. But he delivers Yah, Jerusalem, and all the ten tribes. And then that temple was built. Right? And then we drink from that from the temple waters and purify our bodies and cleanse all that dross from among us. Then the Most High Yah will most definitely live in our sight and our days and our lives will be extended like the days of trees spoken about in Isaiah. I'm trying to reach that. So I'm trying to go through whatever process I have to go through, except of my punishment, to receive that beautiful reward. Blessed be the Almighty Yah. All praise to the Most High Yah. <laughs> Much love. Peace.